What's going on guys, MV Astro here, back at it with another video. And today I'm here with my boy Seth Hendo once again. And today we're gonna be talking about an issue that I recently been having with the KISS firmware. Recently I've been getting asked a lot of questions on Instagram, Facebook, and even my YouTube about why did I make the switch from KISS firmware over to a Betaflight firmware using a KISS board. And well, let me explain why. The main reason why I switched over from KISS firmware over to Betaflight firmware was because KISS was getting these vi real bad vibrations down at zero throttle. Even as soon as I armed, I would have them. It all started whenever I flashed it over to the newest firmware at that time, which was RC 1.2, I believe. And then RC 6 was also doing it, but it just, sometimes it would have it and then sometimes it would go away. So pretty much it, was, it wasn't consistent with the issue until I swapped it over to 1.2. And one thing that, um, I noticed is that with different props, it would do it at different, like... You would do it more or less. Yeah, it would do it more or less. So I recently made the switch from over from the 5040 racecraft props over to the 5152s, and I noticed that with the 5152s, it had it a lot worse wow. than with the 5040s. The 5040s still had it, but it didn't have it quite as much. And I'll show you guys a little clip about what I'm talking about. guys may be asking well are you using um, uh, soft motor mounting on your motors uh, are you isolating your your flight controller from any vibrations and yes we are um, I fly the uh, Tokyo X I don't know if you guys can see but the little red grommets in there are pretty much integrated into the frame to stop any vibrations going in into the flight controller and I could tell you that they absolutely work because previous before me using the butter mount what we call it I used to just hard mount my flight controllers and I used to get mid throttle oscillations and low throttle oscillations with the KISS flight controller on the KISS firmware and as soon as I put the butter mount they all went away but then I started getting these vibrations I wanted to find a solution for like why was I getting these vibrations so th that's when I made the switch and try to solve my issue by switching over to uh, Betaflight firmware that pretty much resolved my issue and therefore I found out that KISS firmware is having some type of issue. I don't know with what, maybe they're filtering. And keep in mind, before this, before switching over to uh, Betaflight, I tried everything with KISS. I tried messing with the uh, filtering, with the notch, low pass filtering, and even tuning the quad. And it, it lowered it a little bit, but it was- Nothing took it away. Nothing took it away. It was still there. And it was really annoying because during flight, it would fly completely fine, but it wasn't until you lower down that throttle all the way down to zero and you would really start getting those bad vibrations to the point where it heated up your motors <clears> to the touch. Which is usually opposite of what normally happens when you need to tune a quad yeah. properly or when the notch filters need to be moved to a different point. Uh, the quad would normally have those types of things in flight as you got on throttle or as you were doing some sort of maneuver. It w doesn't really happen at zero throttle where you're just sitting there idling yeah and this idles like that and gives you this noise and this vibration and it's really really weird yeah and that's and exactly granted listen guys because we're not talking about on crappy props yeah or, or anything like this that. will happen on brand new motors with uh -huh. brand, new props. brand new props you can put three different sets of that's brand another new thing that we we thought too i was mm -hmm. like well, maybe that my motors are banged up because i've been having them mm -hmm. for about six months so we mm -hmm. thought about bad bearings mm -hmm. or maybe like a, a bent prop that we didn't see mm -hmm. but we would try it with brand new fresh props we even tried it on a brand new build and totally. we were still having them mm -hmm. it was just an issue with uh kiss firmware Obviously, because as soon as we switched over to Betaflight firmware, all those issues went out, the vibration issues went out. And uh, that was pretty much my main issue from me going from KISS firmware on a KISS board over to Betaflight firmware. And uh, I've been getting asked, well, why don't you use a regular F4 Betaflight board? Well, I have six quads with KISS flight controller, and that's gonna cost me some money, you know? At least like 40 bucks per flight controller and I don't I don't want to have to switch all of that when I'm not even having any issues with the hardware itself and improved it by me switching over to Betaflight firmware and it fixed all those issues so it was obviously not a re, uh, issue with the hardware not to mention there's really not a board out there that has lent itself to uh, going right over into a 4-in-1 ESC which is what we use pretty much primarily and matter of fact they really really need to do that 
Um, it doesn't make any sense to not have boards that can do both. You can do a four ESC combination or you can do a four in one ESC combination with a, a board if you build it appropriately. Um, I don't know why the industry hasn't done that. Maybe they need to look into that because four and ones are taking yeah, over four pretty and ones much. Seem to be taking and, over. And the industry in the four and, the four and one side, they need to get with the program and make these four and ones be truly capable of doing five and six S. But that's a totally different uh, subject. But anyway, that vibration was solved by switching the firmware yeah. and not changing anything else. That didn't change props. Didn't change motors. Old motors, new motors, exactly. in between Thanks. motors, firmware. Firmware bad bearings, exactly. whatever. So pretty much if any of you guys are having the issue where you're getting those vibrations or the little slight oscillations down at the low end, go ahead and try swapping over to Betaflight firmware on the KISS board because that seemed to resolve a lot of my issues. And um, don't be afraid to to switch firmwares because it may not feel the same or anything. And because quite honestly, Firmwares at this point, they all feel uh, really very, good. very similar. I, I was a big KISS guy for about a year, and it was kind of hard for me to transfer over to Betafly. That's why I try to look for all these <laughs> ways to try to solve my issue. But uh, honestly, as long as you have your own rates and a good tune, like you did on a KISS or whichever firmware you're switching over to, it's going to feel exactly the same. Honestly, don't be afraid to switch over to Betafly yeah. or any other firmware and that may really fix easy. your issue. It's really easy to switch over yeah, to. It's it, not it, that it really big a deal. Is. So the main thing is, is tune out your issues. Make sure you don't have oscillation. Make sure that your quad is flying appropriately. Pitch it, roll it while it's on the ground. Just to make sure everything's going in the right direction and all that good stuff. Then take off, fly, make sure everything is right. Don't come up to a race. Don't come up, show up to a race and your quad is oscillating and things like that. You're going to have problems. You're pushing it harder. You're going around corners the way you probably normally wouldn't. You're, you know, just doing more with the quad. And all of those issues are just going to be magnified by the time you get out to the track. So just fix those things before you get there. Don't be afraid to change your firmwares. Don't be afraid to just at least try it. I mean, if you're worried about it, copy everything down in your CLI or take a picture of it, whatever you got to do to be able to come back to it if you need to. And mm -hmm. then uh, try something else. So moving on from there. KISS, um, firmware, something's going on, that needs to change, you need to, to figure it out. The firmware, from what we can tell, just doesn't seem to be updated with the newest things the that newest we like things. to use. And, and a good example is reversing motors, changing motor order, or even just the pass-through. Those are very, very easy things for us to use and makes our lives very simple but when you don't have it when we love your product it makes it very difficult for us it does the uh one of the biggest things that we noticed here recently on our three inch quads is we use the all-in-one board okay yes which is an awesome awesome little board it works great mm -hmm. uh it makes your small bills very simple but the way we designed our quad we needed to Rotate frame, the board. Yes. The we needed to rotate it 90 degrees. We needed to rotate rotate it 90 degrees, and then we had to have wires coming across the board in order to line up with the, the motors. ESCs. And the ESC. It's yeah. To the motor. It's a small build. Everything needs to be compact and going yeah, where it needs exactly. to go. Not having to go across the board with wires in order to make it work. See, that's just ridiculous. And it's obviously a um, firmware issue. It's either like on beta flight because mm -hmm. either we even tried switching the uh, motor order on Betaflight on the CLI and it wouldn't it let wouldn't us. Allow it. I don't know if it's maybe like something that KISS had on their firmware blocking it or something, but it wouldn't let us switch it. Or they didn't write it into code. Or, or something, which mm -hmm. I'm sure is my, maybe a firmware issue because coming from KISS, KISS is usually like one, two, three, and four, mm -hmm. where uh, Betaflight is one, two, three, and four, and it swapped over to that when, whenever we flashed it with Betaflight but it just wouldn't let us change the motor direction, which or, or, ruined our clean build, yeah. I would say, because we had to extend the wires, like he said, all the way across the board in order for us to get the signal wire, I mean the motor, to the ESC. Being able to rotate your board is something that has been there for forever. I mean, back in the open pilot days, you could still rotate the board, tell the gyro yeah. in what position you're in. But I think the thing that's messing it up with is, I don't know if all all-in-ones do this, because the KISS all-in-one was the first all-in-one that I um, experienced with, but I don't know if all KISS all-in-ones, well, I'm sorry, I don't know if all all-in-one 
flight controllers do it where if you try to turn them um, a certain um, degree on its yaw, mm -hmm. I don't know if the ESCs would also switch uh, over with them. I, it I don't should. Know. It would make a whole lot of sense. It would. It knows if you tell it, hey, I'm rotating 90 degrees, mm -hmm. it should know, okay, well, if you're rotating this direction, then that would be motor one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have to be something that we have to go in and program. If it is, then have a nice simple little tab for us to click on to change motor yeah. orders. Click on to change motor rotation. Because let me tell you, nice. rotation, motor rotation, the opposite direction in the front is awesome. It keeps grass out of your lens. It keeps your lens clean. Yeah, it does. And not to mention, if you hit something, the quad reacts a whole lot different when you hit something. Imagine you're going through the gate and you're going down the right side of the gate and the flag of the gate happens to hit your prop. If it's hitting your right front motor as you're closest to the right front of the of the gate, it just hits it in the same direction that you're going. So it's not a problem. But if that motor rotation is a more traditional direction, when you hit it, right it'll it. stop the motor, which then you're dropping on that front right corner. Yeah. So you see how it makes sense to change those motor rotations? That's not the only situation. That's just sure, one. And I'm sure they could do it. Um, just like like kind of what Racefly did where you just click that one button yeah. and it does everything for you. You don't yeah. have to mess with anything in the CLI. And I mean, that's just all code. And one thing I did notice about KISS firmware, they usually tend to update their things like very late, uh, like maybe a couple months down the road after like race flight or beta flight have already done that switch. I don't, know if be, I don't know if it's because they're scared of doing it or maybe they're just real slow at doing things. I mean, but by all means, KISS is a great firmware. I didn't have any issues until I started flashing with 1.2 and RC6. But besides that, I mean, there's really isn't a complaint besides not having a BioHeli pass through, which I run four in one BioHeli ESCs. And I wish I could just plug in my uh, USB into the KISS fly controller and yeah. flash all my on my uh, ESCs um, rather than having an, a separate yeah. flight controller that has a pass through to flash and set up my it, it uh, just ESC. makes everything a little bit more difficult a few more steps more stuff you uh -huh. got to take with you it just doesn't make much sense at this exactly. at, at yeah. this point in the hobby it shouldn't be that way it should be a whole lot simpler I'm still not understanding why flight controllers don't have specifications for a four and one it should be really easy freaking plug that goes right from the flight controller straight into the into the uh four and one that would be great yeah that would be nice um why, well, do, why does it always has that though it Kiss does but you, but you know what it's very difficult to make it work because the plugs that we have came with the esc and they're very short they're very short yes if, if, yeah. i mean if i think if kiss really wanted to enhance that this uh yeah, usability for us they would put a little plug in there make it long enough to where it would reach yeah no matter which direction we turn it. It's From not what that I know, that's probably the only flight controller that does that, so it's not bad. And you know what a lot of flight controllers do that really annoys me, I'm sure that the Spectrum guys love this, they have a plug for their, yeah, their receiver. Yeah, that is That's pretty sweet. Dude, Freestyle has that been around a sweet. long time. It's like but I don't know, me personally, I don't hand. like the port. Mm -hmm. I prefer the hard-on soft, I yeah. mean the hard-on hard solder. Soft. Yeah. So I don't know, that's just me. It just keeps think, everything... I think if we simpler. had the option, it wouldn't be a bad idea. It wouldn't be a bad idea, as long as it wouldn't be too tall. Yeah. But with that, I think that's pretty much it, right? That's pretty, that's much, pretty much it. I yeah. just wanted to make a quick, well, I don't know if it's quick or not. I'll have yeah, to but. edit it. But I just wanted to make a video explaining the vibration issue that we personally experienced. And I, I'm sure a lot of you guys maybe out there were wondering, well, what could fix this issue and why is it happening? Well, we don't really know why it's happening, but it's, it, it seems to be something in the firmware. But um, yeah, we, we also talked about a little let bit about how you feel. Yeah. Let us know how you feel. Let us know how, yeah. what you guys feel. And if you guys found like a... A, 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 solution. a solution for it on the kiss firmware yeah and maybe we will try it out but um yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video yeah. make sure to uh click that red button down there to subscribe and don't forget to turn on your notifications that way you guys know whenever we post up a new video yeah man. so with that see you guys on the next video and peace out check you later